tonight, um, we are honored and excited to have with us Brother Mark Crowder. He is a, uh, a great singer, worship leader, but as, as well a minister of the gospel. And I'll tell you this, um, and you'll, you'll find out in just a few moments, the reason why we had him do this month um, is he is just so passionate. If you did not know, maybe some of y'all listen to some of his songs. Um, I, I love my favorite song um, by him is Anything Can Happen. Uh, that's my favorite song by him, written by him. But I, his passion for souls, I'm telling you, is just, is, is contagious. And so that's what we have him on tonight. Um, Brother Mark Crowder, thank you so much for taking the time. I'll turn this right over to you, my brother, and you can uh, take over. Oh, someone said they love the whole album. Yes, me too. But that song, Anything Can Happen, let me tell you. <laughs> but brother Crowder, maybe you can sing for us tonight. I'm messing with you. I'll no. you. <laughs> brother Amani, I'm so happy to be on with you. I am absolutely stoked to be with all of you guys. P7s are so huge, and I'm so proud to be here tonight and talk with you guys kind of about my passion, my thoughts uh related to P7 clubs. Um, I I just I really want to communicate something to you that's going to um, change your mind, that's going to spur you into action as soon as tomorrow morning. Um, whatever it's going to, whatever the Lord would have for us tonight, my goal isn't for you to uh, walk away with, man, that was a, a super cruel word, or man, I really enjoyed that. I want there to be such a fire in your spirit that you can barely sleep tonight. I want there to be something that attaches to your spirit that you can, that you're dreaming about it in your sleep tonight. That's what I want to happen out of this meeting. That's what I pray God leaves settles in your spirit that when you get off of this call, that you want to text somebody and talk about it. Not that you want to just go back to watching your TV show and just chilling out, but I want to see a young person that's absolutely turned upside down with a passion for what God's passion is. And so I take you today to Matthew chapter 28, and where Jesus is standing there. He's gone through the crucifixion. He's gone through uh, some of the most horrible atrocities you could ever imagine. Um, I'm sure most of us have seen the Passion of the Christ, so we have a good idea um, in a visual sense what is talked about and written about in Scripture as far as what Jesus had suffered through for the sake of our sins, to see our sins washed away, and not just so that we could be forgiven, but so that we would have the opportunity of everlasting life. That was the beauty of everything that Christ did for us. But in that moment where he's standing on the mound in front of some say over 500 people, he's sitting there, he's standing there and he says, you know, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, preaching the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And just communicating his passion. You've got to understand, he's gone through this whole ordeal He's had this incredible discussion about what uh, about about having gone to the cross and Thomas, if you believe, you know, uh, here are my hands. Put your fingers into the holes of my hands. Look, look. Here's the evidence. He's gone through this whole ordeal, but to wait to the very last moment before he's about to ascend into heaven, before the clouds are about to part. Jesus decides to have a discussion about going and reaching the world. He, he could have talked about living holy and how many know living holy is important. He could have talked about loving our brother and God knows everybody and their mother wants to talk about loving their brother these days. And who's your neighbor? And that's important, right? Who's your neighbor? Are you a good Samaritan? It's not bad, it's important. How many know that? He could have talked about having arms open as the father for the prodigal son. Prodigals are important. 
you know, people coming back are important. We want, we want lost souls coming back. But he chose that moment to say, I want you to go into the world and I want you to turn every stone that is unturned upside down. And I want you to talk to them about what it means to know me and what it means to be saved. I want you to introduce them to the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to introduce them to what it means to have a relationship with me that goes beyond just having a cool prayer, that goes beyond just having a nice little fluffy relationship, but leads to a true heart change and a lifestyle shift. And that's the difference. He could have talked about a lot of things, but before he ascended and split the clouds wide open, that's what his discussion was. We could talk about how cool our churches are. We could talk about how wonderful it is to sing on our praise teams and, and sing and, and lead worship and do conferences here and there. It, it, it might be fun to talk about what we preached on Sunday, but if we're not making any connections, if we're not getting anybody in the house, if we're not teaching a Bible study, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? I, I don't want to go through the go through the motions of being a cool little church kid. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to put on an act here. I'm not trying to just, just make it look good. I'm not trying to buy a better suit next month. I, I, I'm not here to just, just play the dice and be able to shake Brother Gleason's hand once a year, twice a year. I'm, I'm here for the kingdom of God because at some point, the clouds are going to part. There's going to be a trumpet that's going to sound and God's going to come back and, 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 and he's going to say, you know, what have you done? I, I look back on the, on the stories that, that Jesus said that there's going to be somebody that's in the field that's going to be working. Two, two are going to be in the field working and one's going to be there and another one's going to be taken. And the Bible says that there's going to be folks with lamps and there's going to be some that are full and there's going to be some that are empty because they were preparing, but they were consistently preparing. And yes, we're in church and we're doing the business of church, but what is it if we're not consistently doing the business of church because we get sidetracked by political issues and we get sidetracked by thoughts of this world and we get sidetracked by our our careers and we get sidetracked by you know what's my college degree going to be i want to encourage you get a good college degree i want to encourage you go to a secular school and get a good job and pay tithes but i want to also encourage you make sure that while you're doing all that talk to somebody about jesus it's not enough it's just not enough and I think, and what hurts my heart is that people get, get this idea that because, you know, we, we, we've got some growing Instagram accounts or, or because people want to put you on the cover of, of, of this, that, and the other thing, that that negates our, our, our responsibility. And it is a responsibility to, to talk to Jesus. So I, I want to encourage you, uh, you know, Anthony, and I want to encourage you, Leah, and I want to encourage you, Kenzie, and I want to encourage you, Destiny. I want to encourage you, Megan. I want to encourage you, Mason, and, and De Daniela, and, and Dominique, and Asher, and Joshua. I'm not just sitting here trying to convict you. I'm sitting here under conviction myself because I understood that when I saw that lady at, 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 that was my waitress the other day at the restaurant, that I had a responsibility to witness to her. I, 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 had, I felt in my heart when I went to the gas station last week in Indianapolis when I was there for Music Fest, that I had a responsibility to witness to that gentleman there at the gas station because I can't go through the motions of just going here and there and doing this thing and that thing and publicizing about it and writing a couple of songs and getting a couple of Grammy nominations. It ain't worth it if God looks at my resume and says, this was the number one thing I said to do. And the last time that I can ever say that I did that was a couple of months ago or a couple of years ago. It's not enough. It's not enough. 
I, I, I don't, I don't want to sit here and, and, and flaunt a resume going to this conference and that conference. If I can't flaunt a resume of doing what God said to do, I, and it's not about flaunting a resume, but you understand the analogy. I, I don't want to just come around here and just say, well, I'm anointed and, and God and God's blessed me and I've got a good rapport and, I, and I'm, I'm being a, a good father to my kids. I, I, don't, I don't want to just publicize all those good things if I'm not going to say, Jesus, I am making you famous to the best of my ability. Jesus, I'm telling somebody about you. He could have spent his last five minutes talking about going to being a good father and a good husband. He could have spent his last five minutes about paying your tithes and, and some pastors probably would have appreciated that. And he, and he could have spent his last five, 10 minutes talking about how good it is to be a good saint. And I can guarantee you some of your fellow saints in church would have loved to hear him say that because we wanna be in this together. We're as strong as our weakest link. But out of all of those things that he could have talked about, the very last thing that he said before he split the sky wide open is he said, I want you to go tell people about me and I'm gonna send back a comforter that's gonna give you the power and that's gonna give you the authority to re-emphasize and, and put a stamp on the things that you tell them. Because we don't have the Holy Ghost just for our own salvation. We don't have access to that power and to that name just for our own self's sake, but so that we can go ye into all the world and that we can see miracles at Walmart and we can see people filled with the Holy Ghost in, in the grocery store and that people in your schools and in your classrooms can have an answer. The fact of the matter is, is that there are young people that are in your classrooms that are so hungry for God. They're so desperate for somebody to reach out and touch them. Some of them are so standoffish because they have, they have formulated a process to protect themselves. If you reject other people before you get rejected, you never get rejected. If you constantly keep people at arm's length before they allow you to come in, you never have to worry about being somebody that is broken off or somebody that's ghosted. You never have to worry about being somebody that is rejected from society. If you're constantly rejecting, constantly keeping people at arm's length, constantly saying that I'm not going to be a part, that I'm going to stay to myself. There's a reason why the kids in your class are that way. There's a reason why they feel apprehensive to get involved in something. They just feel like they're gonna get let down again. They feel like they're gonna get smacked down again. I want you to know that when I was in high school, <coughs> excuse me, I saw miracles happen when I was in high school. There was a young football player on a, on a Friday night, got his arm broken. And this was in, uh, 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 I forget the date now, but he had, he had gotten his arm broken. I want to say early January. Um, uh, uh, no offense to everybody, but we are a perennial uh, football powerhouse and always making it to the championships. It was good time. I, I loved football season, but this was one of our running backs and he got his arm broken and, and, and uh, he came, this was uh, when I saw him, it was in, in January, we were gearing up for uh, Black History Month in February, and we were in rehearsals. And he said, he had his arm in his sling. And I said, hey, I, I just feel like God wants to heal you. Is that all right? And I prayed for him right there. And he, his arm was healed right then. The pain that was in his arm was gone and I saw him a few days later and the cast was gone. I'm telling you that God wants to do that kind of thing. There were young people from my high school that got baptized in Jesus name and got filled with the Holy Ghost. In my high school, I was the first person to start a CMI group at my college. And we saw people get the Holy Ghost and baptized and healed. These are things to publicize about because as far as I'm concerned, they're your reasonable service. We, none of you are perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. I'm the worst of all sinners on this call, but I want you to know that I have a responsibility to talk about Jesus. I have a responsibility to make him famous. I have a responsibility 
to tell somebody about Jesus. And let, guess what? You don't have to be super churchy about it. You don't have to grease everybody's head every time you do it. You don't have to sit there and smack them across the face and say, believe that suit 38. Something as simple as, hey, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. But don't stop there. Don't stop there. So, uh, well, some of us are real good at saying Jesus loves you. I think that's good. But take it a step further. Hey, where, where would you go if God comes back? Have you ever thought about have you ever thought about if there's a higher power out there? Do you believe that there's a higher power? Do you want to know more about him? We live in a quote unquote Christian nation. And really what we mean by that in, in modern times, it used to mean, it used to mean that, uh, that people were regular churchgoers. And it used to mean that people believe the Bible as it was, as it is written, not with their imagination. What we mean now more so with the Christian nation is more people often than not are just people that believe that there's a higher power and most of them believe that his name is is god or jesus and it's not muhammad or it's not uh or her krishna or something else like that but his name is jesus there's a lot of people that believe jesus is god there's a lot of people in the united states that believes our god's name is jesus but not all of them know anything about him You'd be surprised how many kids in your school don't even know the story of David and Goliath. You say, do you know David? Yeah, I know who David is. Do you know Goliath? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you know the story between David and Goliath? Have no clue. No clue. Don't know who Paul is. Don't know what he wrote in the book of Romans. They have, when you talk about when you talk about uh, uh, homosexuality and 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 uh, gender identity in your schools, they they don't even all of them want to say point two is is back in the Old Testament about uh, about it being an abomination. None of them even know that Paul wrote about that in the first chapter of Romans and and talked about it being against nature. They, they, they love the New Testament when it talks about love and, and caring about your neighbor and, and giving all of that you have to the poor. But they don't love it when it talks about gender identity. They don't love it when it talks about following Christ morally, inwardly, as well as outwardly. They, they don't care about that. So it, and, some, and most of them, I, I'm telling you, don't even know that it is there. So you, uh, when you talk to people, we're not here to get in an argument. We're not here to argue about who knows more scripture than who. We're here to have an honest, authentic, genuine, loving conversation. Some of you don't, don't have a good relationship with your brother and sister to have a good conversation. But I know that if I wanted to reach my brother, I wouldn't come to him and tell him, hey, you're going to hell. I wouldn't tell my brother, hey, you know, you're, you're lost. And, and now, I, I, you know, now that I've got some sense about me, now that I have some understanding about me, I wouldn't tell that to anybody. But when I go to somebody and say, you know what? Jesus loves you. Are you hungry to know more about God? Are you thirsty to get closer to him? Most people are going to say yes to that. They want to know more about God. They want to know, they want to get closer to him, especially when they can see Jesus in you especially when they can see his love permeating from your words, permeating from your actions. You paid for their lunch one day when they were up short. You offered to help them out with a, with a class that they were struggling with. You showed Jesus love to them. They want that in their lives. They want more of that. And when you show that kind of a presentation to them, they say, you know what? There's something about this guy that, that's real and legit. I was talking to Brother Soto the other day about, uh, about um, starting new churches. And he said, it's so important to start that new, that fresh rapport, that, that initial rapport for, with the right perspective, talking to people about things that matter to them, about moral purity, talking to them about you know, uh, uh, making sure that a man's a man and a woman's a woman. Most people agree on those sorts of things. Loving people, giving, helping each other out. When your, per when your friend needs a coat, giving them a coat, offering them a help and assistance, not being somebody that, that, that shows a cold shoulder to individuals and then expecting them to be open to your gospel. Be a loving person. 
be a kind person. And that will open the door for God to be able to speak. And then you come to them with authority and with, and with a prayerful answer to the things that they're going through. That's the difference. And when you can come to them and say, you know what, God really wants to change your life and you can walk them through scripture and just, just explain things in a way that is understandable to them. That's one thing that I had to learn when I was younger. I kind of would just quote scripture at people. I, I, I would say, you know, I, it was almost like I wanted to impress people with how much scripture that that I understood and, and how much scripture that I knew. How many uh, uh, people on here are Bible quizzes? You've, you've been in Bible quizzing. Anybody been in Bible quizzing? Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's a bunch of people on here that have been in Bible quizzing. Um, and that's awesome. But that's not the time to show off your Bible quizzing. Uh, teaching Bible studies isn't the time to show how much scripture you know and caveat to that how much scripture you know verbatim that's that's all well and good but it has its place bible quizzing is so that as the word says that i might hide your word in my heart that i might not sit and see and what happens what 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 happens when you hide your word in your heart it gets distributed in ways throughout your body throughout your mind that can be consumed and used. And, and we're kind of taking a biological reference there from the scripture to, to turn into a practical way of explaining this. I don't wanna just understand the word and know the word. I want to be able to regurgitate it, if I can use that word, in a way that's helpful, in a way that's understandable, in a way that's applicable to the people that I'm talking to. So when I say, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many of the Lord our God shall call. I'm not going to say that to somebody that's unchurched. I'm going to say, you know what? I want you to know that these people were hungry on the day of Pentecost, and they wanted to know God. And I'm going to paraphrase that scripture and say, they, they heard these men speaking in this nuts language. They thought they were all flipping drunk. They thought these guys were insane. But they didn't stop there. There was something in that moment on the day of Pentecost that pricked their hearts. And they said, and, and Peter got up and he started to preach to him. And he said, hey, this is what's been prophesied about. This is God coming to visit. This is God coming to change our lives. This is God sending a comforter. And they heard that message and they were pricked in their hearts. That means something on the inside of them said, I need this for me. And they said, what do I do to have this experience? And Peter said, you have to repent. You have to change. You have to want to be closer to God than you are to all these other distractions in your life. And once you've repented, you can be baptized in that beautiful name of Jesus. As Paul says, it washes away all of your sins in Acts chapter 22 and verse 14. And he says, then you can have the opportunity to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we know based on Acts chapter 19, where Peter is preaching to uh, a, a, a Roman centurion and his family, that when they get the Holy Ghost, that they speak in another language that's not of this earth, but it's a language from heaven. It's a paraphrasing, it's a communication. It's all well and good to have those scripture memorized. And for you, for y'all that don't have them memorized, I'd encourage you to do that. You need to have those scripture memorized. But a Bible study, a P7 club, a CMI, that's not the time to show off that memorization. That's the time to speak to somebody heart to heart. That's the time to show somebody your passion for them, their passion, your passion for their soul, your passion for their eternal destination. That's the time to show somebody that you care about something beyond algebra, that you care about a girl beyond how cute she looks at your school, 
that you care whether she ends up in hell or not, that you care whether he ends up in hell or not. That's what you care about. And you communicate it from a sense, and I'll take it a step further, that you care about the fact that they're being abused at their house, that you care about the fact that they've been raped before, that you care about that they have children out of wedlock, that you care about the fact that they go through a daily torment of feeling like they're not enough, that they fight suicidal thoughts, that they're cutting underneath their clothes, all those armbands that they have, all those long sleeve shirts that they wear, all those long skirts. It's not because they wanna look modest, it's because they're trying to hide the self torment that they're going through on a daily basis. This is the time to communicate that. If, you, if you're having a hard time starting a P7 club because you're scared about how to talk about God, I encourage you to get the fire in yourself to, to start a P7 club just so you can use it as an outreach to those that are suffering from suicide in your school because it's an epidemic in our high schools right now. It's an epidemic in our middle schools right now. And we can't sit idly by and let the devil kill off our peers. We can't let, we can't sit idly by and watch the devil destroy crops that God intended to be harvested for the end time. We can't do it. We can't sit here and go to sleep in our beds every night, thankful for salvation, thankful for the love of Christ, thankful for God's forgiveness and his blessing and his help and his favor on our lives while people around us are dying. Not, not from dies and dying from car crash, but they're dying from the inside out. They're literally skeletons walking around without feeling and completely numb to life because their lives are horrible, because they wish they weren't even breathing. That's what we're talking about. We've, we've got to get that burden. It's got to be more than just something we shout about at church. It's got to be something more than you clap about on a P7 Zoom call. It's got to be something more than, 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 than Mark Crowder just talks about and sings about. It's got to be more. It's got to be something that drives us to manage our conversation every single day, every moment. Every time you see somebody new, it's an opportunity. Maybe it's maybe it's a weird opportunity. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't talk to every single person I meet. You know, I, I had a guy wash my car the other day. I didn't talk to him about Jesus. I probably should have, but I didn't. But I did go to that gas station the next day, and I did talk to that guy about Jesus because I felt convicted every single day. And, and what's more is, we're going every single week, every single day, five days out of the week with kids that we're, that we're in school with. We, we know the list of kids that need God. We're aware, we talk to them, we hear the conversation. And some of you, God is trying to awaken spiritual gifts in you and discernment. And you're sitting there and you're talking to these kids and they're laughing and they're joking around. And there's something inside of you that says something's not right here. There, there's 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 emptiness in this voice. I I hear the boisterous laughing. I I hear the happiness talking about prom. I hear people talking about you know the cool new song that uh, that uh, um, Billie Eilish just dropped last weekend. But but there's something in the tone that isn't right. There's something in my spirit. That's like an alarm going off. And, and I know that they're hungry for something. I, I've got to be aware of what God is trying to speak, of what God is trying to say. I can't be deaf to spiritual gifts trying to be activated in my life. I can't go deaf to God trying to resurrect the prophetic in my life. I can't go deaf to what God is trying to speak in the spirit. I, I, I know, Brandon, you may feel young. I, I know, Leah, you may feel inadequate. I, I know, Anthony, you may feel like you don't operate in that. I know, Christian, you may feel like God doesn't speak to you that way or he hasn't yet, or you haven't gotten an affirmation from your pastor. Uh, uh, Joshua, I know that you may not have used that in your church service 
but I want to encourage you. I want you to know that God is speaking to you in that way. I want you to know that when you feel those feelings that in your school, that God's trying to make you aware and make you cognizant of something. And you don't have to blurt out, hey, you're suffering from suicidal thoughts. You don't have to do that. You don't have to blurt out, hey, I know that you're having problems in your house and your parents are doing this, that, and the other thing. But I want you to encourage something that you can do is you can tell them, hey, I know things not, may not be great right now. I love your laugh. I, I love that new dress that you, I, I love the pants you're wearing. I, it, it doesn't matter. Start off with something nice and then say, you know what? I know that God wants to touch you. And I know that you've been going through a tough time deep in your heart. And it's tough to reveal that to people. But I, I you know, I, I can't really explain how I know this, but I, I do know that God wants to do something in your life. Is there a time that we could talk? I've got this P7 club that happens at 7.30 on Tuesday morning. What are you doing? Do you think you'd come to school early? Do you think you could catch the early bus? You know, they're going to serve breakfast in the morning. You know, you got the food all, you got the food cornered. You got it. You know, we'll come in there with a couple of muffins. And we'll have a good discussion. What do you say? I'll pick you up. My parents are going to pick me up. Maybe we can roll by your house and get you. What do you think? 20 minutes. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. I know God will touch you. I know God will tell you something that means something. I know God will do something in your life that your parents don't seem to care about, that your friends don't seem to get. I know that there's something else there. Most of this is a mundane life that you've been living. But if you'll give God 20 minutes, if you'll give God 30 minutes, I promise you something will shift. What would you want somebody to say to you if you were them? What would you want somebody to say to you if you were dealing with the problems that they're dealing with? That's what I believe God wants us to take into every single day. Because the business of being UPC, the business of apostolic, it provides so much church structure that it's so easy to look the part and not be the part. And we've got to be about our father's business. We've got to fulfill the good, great commission. I, you know, I, I just finished teaching a home Bible study that I've been teaching for a while, a long time ago, and I'm itching to find another one. I, I, I believe that we've got to be consistent about the things that we preach about to other people. I believe that we've got to be consistent about the things that we shout about on Sunday. I believe we've got to be consistent about the things that we're going to thank God about in our services. And I know each and every one of you young people are passionate about these things. I'd encourage you that, um, you know, uh, Imani, when's the, when's the next P7? It'll be in a few weeks, last Monday of April. Bro, you muted yourself, bro. Okay, sorry. I, I encourage you, I encourage everyone on this call, double this attendance. Do whatever you've got to do. Drag people if you've got to. Bribe people with 20 bucks. I don't care what you have to do. Double this call at the end of April, double it. Do whatever you've got to do to ignite a fire in your youth group to say, we will not let our schools go unevangelized. We will not let our homerooms go unevangelized. We will not let these messages of, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about uh, I'll, I'm going to say this one point and then I'll get off of here. I'm, I'm right at time. But a lot of kids right now are struggling with their gender identity. It's a huge deal right now. I want you to know most of them are not churched kids. You know, people want to guilt church people into feeling like, hey, the reason why these kids go through so much mental illness is because of religious traditionalism that tells them, that, you know, God wants them to be this or that, and they don't feel like they fit into those boxes. The fact of the matter is, 
most of these kids don't even know that stuff exists. So don't buy into that lie that people want to force you to be quiet because of that stuff. It's not true. It is not true. You have to change the narrative. It's up to you to talk about what God is doing in your life. Talk about the things that God's doing. Talk about the miracles that God's doing. Talk about his love. Talk about his salvation. And that love will lead them to an Acts 238 experience. You don't have to start with Acts 238. Just get there as quick as possible. But share his love. Share his grace. Share his goodness. Those kids are hungry for it. The kids you go to school with, they're hungry for it. You're hungry for it. All of you guys on here, you, none of y'all are perfect. Encourage each other, help each other. That's why you got to make this call. That's why you got to double this call next month. That's why you got to triple it the month after that. Because each of you guys need this just as much as your classmates do. Let's pray. God, I ask you, God, that you would set a fire under us, Lord, that is absolutely unquenchable. I ask you, God, that you would do something inside of us that would stir us up to such a deep place that you would help us, God, stay focused on your great commission. There are so many things, God, that we want to do for you, Lord. We want to be great. We want to be great sons and daughters. We want to be great husbands and wives. We want to be great fathers and mothers one day. We want to be great classmates. We want to have great careers. We want to have great ministries, God. We want to show, God, people in the church that we're sold out. But we also, Lord, we want to do what you want us to do. And you told us, God, that you want us to go into all the world, all of it, and preach the gospel. And I ask you, God, that you won't let us feel comfortable going day in and day out. You won't let us feel comfortable going week in and week out not sharing the gospel with somebody, not starting a P7 club, not giving somebody somewhere an opportunity to know you in a way that they have never known you. We're going to submit to you, God. We're going to submit ourselves to that call. We're going to submit our hearts to that. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. And more than that, God, we expect amazing things. We expect that for every step we take, you're going to cause it, God, to be like we took 10 steps. We, God, we expect that for every time we witness to somebody, it's going to be like we witness to three more people because you're that kind of a God. You can produce that kind of insane return. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in advance for it. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Type amen. Wave at me something. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Wow. I'm literally in tears, which I expected was going to happen. We're going to have Q&A with Brother Mark here. If you've got any questions about evangelism, type it in the chat. Last week, I have about 15, 16 minutes left here. Ask any question. you got questions that you want to ask about peace, how to reach your friends more effectively, maybe something you've encountered over this last month in your clubs and you want insight on, let's type it in the chat and but as, as we're doing that, I, I said this as you're talking, Brother Mark, I thought, and I said to my youth group here, my local church, a, uh, a few months ago, as you were just talking, and I'll say this to someone here tonight, um, listen, I don't think, and I could be wrong on this, I'm not saying this is 100% is true, I, I, I don't know, but I don't think there is a better time and better opportunities that you can reach somebody for the gospel of Jesus Christ, like the time when you are in middle school and high school, and that culture where you see everybody, the same people every single day, you're seeing them every single day, and you got lunch together, you got you, everyone's still really under the guidance of their parents, that most kids aren't making crazy decisions just yet. I don't think there's a better opportunity, I'll start our youth group here in my city, to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ 
And so I urge someone tonight, if you heard anything Brother Mark say, listen, when you go to school tomorrow, and I don't know when your P7 is meeting this week, and if you haven't started a P7, listen, get in, get involved in this. This ministry is, I, I love this ministry so much. I love being a part of this because I tell you, this is changing the world. Once I, I think I saw someone type in the chat, they got five people coming there, more people coming to their P7. So listen, if you just have one person show up in your P7 meeting this week, it was a success. It was a success. You hear me tonight. It was, this is about people. And, and I love what Brother Mark said excellently. Like this is, listen, you know, sometimes you can get so caught up in church uh, methods that we, we love and we talk about pulpit preaching and this and that and and we can forget what this is all about and that's people loving the broken and the hurting and so I pray someone tonight grasp something that was said tonight and and uh, but if you got a question you type it in the chat oh I already see one in the chat um yeah I I can start going through these things that Imani man you and I are just so on the same page i i love doing these calls with you bro because i just i just think you know you get it man i love being with people like that and you kids on here you get this man y you adults on here you young adults on here you get this don't let the devil scare you out of that kind of stuff don't don't let the devil scare you out of pursuing what god's calling you to do i want to try and address some of these questions yeah uh, go ahead, bro I, I, let me i saw the one about the drumming Hey, hey, Joshua, send that to me on Instagram and I'll answer you there. I kind of want to keep this to evangelism here. Uh, Brandon, I saw you're going to be leaving your P7 club. Man, love that you've been doing that. That's so amazing. Um, I, I think I, I think that just continuing to find people that can get in on it um, is just something that you've got to work hard at. I, it's, um, it's, it's tough to really find somebody that you can pass a baton to sometimes in P7 clubs, especially if you don't have multiple kids from your church because you want to find somebody that has support group. But um, the best thing that, that I did was um, finding other young people that, um, finding other young people from other churches that have, um, you know, a support group to rely on. So if you don't have somebody from another apostolic church going to your school, it's going to be a lot more difficult and I, you know, don't, don't kill yourself if you're not able to find somebody, uh, you know, to, to take over. Don't, don't, you know, get too depressed about it, but um, do what you can. You know, you did your best and, and go forward in Jesus name. But if you can find somebody that's from another apostolic church or from your youth group to, to help, that would be, those are always ideal situations with a support. Um, agnostic, I saw agnostic, saw Jehovah's Witness, I saw Satanist. Um, no, let me interrupt. I, I have never seen in my life that last question by Savannah. Satanist attends the club weekly. Yeah. So when I started witnessing, wow, I'm interested to hear this one. So, I, I mean, it's it's the same with, with all of them, right? If uh, you just got to be Christ to people. Um, I, I think it's really, if a Satanist is attending your club weekly, unless they're just bombarding you with abusive comments, which has happened, but it doesn't sound like that's the case for you. It's my, my what I felt in your comment was they're just attending weekly. At some point, you know, they're getting the gospel. And you're throwing seed, and what's left for for you to do is maybe just walk in one day, spend only five minutes talking about the Bible instead of twenty five, and spending the next ten to fifteen minutes with music from your cell phone and offering an opportunity for worship and praise and creating a moment with God to let God finish the job. If they're coming weekly, that means there's something that's hungry in them. And they're trying to shed that reality of, of, uh, of being agnostic. And they're trying to find a new identity in Christ. So give them the opportunity. At some point, it's time to stop feeding people and it's start, let's start 
it's time to start releasing people to actually engage with the God you've been talking about. Turn on that worship music, create a worship moment. If you're trying to get Jehovah's Witnesses in there, if you're trying to get agnostics in your club, if you're trying to get people that don't agree with you, it's not, it, again, we're not here to get in a biblical argument. Do not do that. We're not in here to get in a scripture fight. Do not do that. We're here to say, hey, we're going to be talking about Jesus. Do you want to come check us out? You got to understand, you guys have other Christian clubs in your school that are there, and they're all just talking about Jesus. The difference is, with a P7 club, you direct the narrative. You don't have to be super ghosty about it. It doesn't have to be super, you know, whatever you're talking about Jesus and all of those kids you're talking to will go to that other club and let somebody else shove false doctrine down their throat. You're going to talk about Jesus and you're going to guide the conversation and you're going to feed them truth. That's the difference. Don't make it more complicated than that. Um, what's some of the others? Brother Mark, there's one question that's good. It, it, it was said, how do you reach out to people who keep on, this is a good one, who keep on saying no all the time to the church things you invite them to? Um, I, you know, you have to have somebody that has a pricked heart. You know, I, I, I'm always, I'm always a big fan of, you know, kind of going back and knocking the doors that you've knocked. But um yeah, also I have to give people time to be ready for the gospel. I think sometimes because they're a good friend of ours or there's somebody that we have a good connection with, or maybe they're not something like that has either of those. We just, for whatever reason, we feel an openness to go and witness to that person, but they become a distraction. It would be like, it'd be like a single grain of wheat that is like, sitting in the middle of a massive field but it's protected by steel armor and we can't cut down this one and we almost view it as a challenge that we can't cut it down so we keep trying to cut it down and god's like hey look around there's a whole field there that's white that's the way your school is cut, keep coming back to that to that one grain of wheat that that you know you're you're going to get it one of these days but there's a whole list of others to go and talk to tomorrow that's not named whoever that person's name is. Brother Mark, I want to add on to this something you said once on a call, um, and I think it's really good in this as well. You can never teach the wrong person. Can you finish the quote for me? I, I don't want to butcher it. You can never teach the wrong person right enough. Something along those lines, right? Yes. Um, I, I'm forgetting it right now. You, you can never... <clears throat> you can never teach it. You can never teach the right person in a wrong way, and you can never teach the wrong person the, in, in the right way. In other words, it doesn't matter how many times you go to a person that's not ready to hear the gospel. It doesn't matter how good you perfect your approach and your statement to them. It's not going to change them if they're not ready. Right. And the person that is absolutely ready to go, you could absolutely do the worst possible Bible study you've ever done in a thousand lifetimes. And they will say, where's the baptismal tank? <laughs> you know, show me to the altar right now, because people who are ready are just ready. And people who are not ready are just not ready. So good. Yeah. Uh, thank the Lord. All right. So uh, what are most more, uh, more ways to grow your club? I recently took over P7 club right now. What I would recommend for you to do for your P7 club, set a goal of one. Okay. You're talking to one person every day or one person a week about your P7 club. One person every couple of classes, set a goal of one, whatever that cadence needs to be for you, you know, one per class, one a day, one per week, whatever that, whatever that cadence is, set 
a minimum cadence of one and make sure that you hit it every day and keep yourself accountable. Uh, stay accountable with your, your uh, youth pastor, whatever that is, whatever that cadence is for you, stay consistent about it. Shoot a quick text. Hey, got this done or mark, mark it in a, a journal, mark it in, you know, text a friend from school that you're keeping accountable with whatever that is, just stay accountable and just say, Hey, I hit my one today. I hit my one for this class, whatever it is. Um, keep it reasonable. I like the one a day thing. Okay. You know, you're going to go through two, three or four classes, depending on how your school is structured. Some of you guys go through seven or eight classes a day um, or six, six, six or seven classes a day, whatever it is, one person a day, I'm going to talk to about my P7 club. And again, we're just inviting them to a place that we're going to, where we're going to talk about God real simple. You know, it's a time for us to get together you know, with COVID, you know, we felt so segmented, we felt so separated. This is an opportunity to get together a hang. Um, we're going to talk about God. Do that one time every day. You'll get people and just keep doing it. Keep doing it. When your group hits five, it's going to be super cool, but keep doing it. When your group hits 10, it's going to be amazing, but keep doing it. Keep your cadence. Um, any other good ones here, Imani? I'm yeah, trying. someone messaged me privately and said they joined on late and they're not sure what a P7 club is. I'll just address this real quick. A P7 club, so just to make it clear, we there are many ways you can reach your friends in a high school and a middle school, um, but a P7 is a sponsored ministry by the United Pentecostal Church, UPCI Youth Ministries, that helps students launch Bible clubs in their high schools and middle schools. So if you go to p7clubs.com, I'll put it in the chat right after I uh, finish answering this question and I'll ask another question where the market will be done. But I'll put a link into p7clubs.com. There's an entire website of resources on lessons, on things to use, on how you can teach people about Jesus Christ and bring them to the cross. So P7 is a Bible club in a high school it's called, it's a, it's a sponsored ministry by the United Pentecostal Church. And it's, in my opinion, in my biased opinion, as an XP 7 er um, it's one of the greatest ministries we have in our movement. And it's led by our director, Brother Seth Boyd, who's on here tonight. And it's just amazing to see where God is taking this ministry next. So if you have any more things about PSA, I'll, I'll put the link in so you can go check it out as well. But um I, I want to answer one thing, one more question here, and, and then we'll get out of here. Sweeney, I love your question. I'm argumentative with a person, and this person just happens to be atheist in this question. Um, how do I stop that from happening? Anytime you're argumentative, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is look at yourself, okay? Most of the time, the reason why people are argumentative about things is because of their personal inadequacies, to be quite honest. Um, and, and a lot of that comes from, you know, you're talking to kids that are not church, as I said earlier, you're talking to kids that don't know the Bible. And so you're arguing from a position of one authority, being the Bible, and they're arguing from a completely different authority, you know, maybe their life experience, you know, um, uh, science, from their perspective, you know, whatever that, whatever that authority is. And so we define an authority um, based on an element or set of concepts that outline our perception on the world and our thinking. So you have to understand that they're coming from a completely different perspective. And so what happens is when you get in that discussion and somebody is not using the same authority as you, um, you get argumentative because you don't know how exactly to address their questions because you want to address their questions from a biblical authority and they don't like those answers because that's not their point of reference. So you have to find a different way 
of, of speaking their language, which is why I said, don't use those opportunities to quote scripture and be super, you know, churchy and all that kind of stuff. Just talk to people right where they're at. Speak from your heart. Speak about your love. The most powerful thing you have is your own testimony. You know, I've been struggling with depression in my life. Um, I don't know uh, how, how I could have gotten through it if God wasn't there for me. You know, um, I know a friend in our youth group at church, you know, she literally almost killed herself six months ago. If it wasn't for God in an altar, and I remember that service, I was praying with her, you know, she probably would not be here today. You know, those types of, those types of communications, they stop an argument right in their tracks and it forces them to be just as much off edge as you were before. And when they're off edge, then that means that that offers an opportunity for God to kind of break through their callous and rely on the spirit to do the rest of the talking. So we're at uh, 10 one. Um, I'll turn it back over to Monty and I'll stop talking. Love you guys. So proud of you guys. Amazing meeting. Double this man, double it. Let make sure there's 70 people on here next time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, this has been a great call. And this will be uploaded to our P UPCI Youth Ministries YouTube page. And we will be back again because we missed March. We'll be back on April 25th with Brother Ryan Dean. It's going to be a great, great session. So invite someone, tag P7 Club. Listen, let's share this with people in your youth group and let people know about P7 Zoom with the fam. It's excellent. And if there's one thing I want to leave everybody with tonight and we'll close off is, I, again, I, if the passion for people, let's remember who we're reaching, let's love people, and let's have revival this week. And I can't wait to see you guys in a few weeks' time. God bless you. All the best. Thank you so much, Brother Crowder.